My name is Michael Clegg. I am the co-chair of the Inter-American Network of Academies of Sciences. That's a, an elected office, so it's a term election. I'm nearing the end of my time in that job. I see. Well, while you're still active, then, I would like to <laughs> ask you, as uh, Iana's, uh, what are the next steps uh, for water program after this uh, water? Program? Right. The water program's had um, a number of uh, successes, and among them are to produce two important books, a book on uh, the assessment of water resource issues and most of the countries of the Americas, that book has had received almost a million downloads from the web. And then very recently, just in the last six months, uh, it's released a second book on urban water challenges in the Americas, which is a huge issue because the Americas is the most urbanized of the uh, continents of the world. It has, it's about 85% urbanized. And the management of water in urban settings is crucial for human consumption, for sanitation, for a vast variety of uses that waters do. The next big project for Ioannis is going to be water quality. Water quality is a, a large challenge everywhere, uh, both in the developed and in the developing countries of the hemisphere. In the developing countries, it's often a problem of, for example, contamination of water by uh, heavy metals like arsenic associated with mining activities which are not regulated or which are carried out illegally and also uh, the lack of effectiveness of isolating sanitation streams from those of uh, consumption water. In the, in the developed world we have plenty of problems with water contamination as well including contamination with various chemicals from industrial processes and and um, other things. We've been a little bit better in managing uh, the potability of water for human consumption. So there are many challenges in managing water. Uh, a final challenge, which is absolutely crucial, is making sure that uh, we share the water, the limited water supplies of this globe with the other forms of life that are also dependent upon it because we're absolutely dependent upon the web of life on Earth for our own survival. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, one general question yeah, I, I want right. to ask. Uh, in, in your opinion, what do you think the state of the global water will be as uh, us as a human race, we're nearing our, our peak of uh, population? Yeah. Um, and then it'll gradually go down. But right. right now we're at about 7.4 billion people. As we climb, right. let's say in the next few decades, to about 8 billion people, what do you think the state of the water will be? Well, I actually don't think that it's going it, it, to... There were forecasts that it might begin to decline, peak around 2050. But right now it looks like it'll be about 9.3 billion in 2050 and probably 10 billion or above by the turn of the next century. So. Uh, the rate of increase of human population is definitely decreasing. We're gro the rate at which we are increasing the number is going down, but the absolute number is still going up and will go up through the rest of the century probably. So the demands for water resource use for human needs as well as for the rest of the occupants of the planet are only going to increase. And that means that we're gonna to have to be more efficient and successful in how we use water. Uh, we're gonna to have to be able to employ improved technologies in the utilization of water. We're gonna to have to have better management strategies. And we may also have to do things like is done in Orange County, which is, which is uh, a very special situation where um, most of the water for human consumption is actually reclaimed. From, uh, from wastewater streams that, uh, that have been very effectively reclaimed so that the water is as good as distilled water. But um, nevertheless, we're making much more efficient use of our water here. Uh, California, especially coastal California, in the southern part of the state is, is a desert landscape and water is the vital resource, Los Angeles would not be the city it is today 
if our ancestors 100 years ago had not invested in the systems that bring water to Southern California. That was the major factor that constrained its growth around the beginning of the 20th century. And the public investment in, in water systems to move water from the north down to the south is what made the growth of the economy in this region possible. Uh, as, as so as, you know, the, as far as the news is saying, we're running out again. Well, so we're, we're in a drought. We're, and what, well, California has cyclical droughts, and this is certainly a severe one, perhaps the most severe one. And our predecessors were wise in developing projects to store and manage water so that in the lean years we had the resources we needed to get, to get along for both agriculture as well as human consumption you know, by collecting sufficient water in the years of higher rainfall. That possibility has now pretty much been played out and so we're going to need to find other ways of managing our water supply more efficiently. But there is a lot of scope for increases in efficiency and uh, technological improvements. And there's no reason to think that we can't get through this and, and manage our water resources in a way that will accommodate an increasing human population. It, but it requires science, engineering, um, and the foresight of public leadership to make this happen. I think we're doing a good job. You know, if I think if you look at the history, we've managed to meet the challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, particularly in California, I think California has been a, a state of great innovation and creativity. And I hope that that will continue to be true in the future. I don't have any reason to doubt that it won't be true in the future. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay.